Hey guys, Gamer of Destruction back again, and it's time for some more Skyrim. Okay, let's get into it. You know, I gotta say, White Run's definitely one of my favourite holds in Skyrim. So, in the last episode, we got some more miscellaneous quests, so, let's get into them. Okay. Don't know whether we'll do that one yet. Um, we'll probably do that one, yeah. Now, that's not quite miscellaneous, but we did get that in the last episode, so let's work on that. The Jagged Crown. Oh, wait, no. That's not the one I'm thinking of. That's the one. The Mind of Madness. It's not quite a miscellaneous quest, but we did get it in the last episode. The Mind of Madness. Let's do it. Wanderer like you must have plenty of tales to tell, but I'm afraid I'm too busy to hear them. Huh, really? Seems there's no end to the needs of the Imperials. But what can I help you with? Uh, nothing, actually. Wait, I know you. Do you? Wait, I know you. There's no mistake. You're a wanted man, and it's time to pay for your crimes. What? You know what? You're not worth the hassle. Go. Be some other god's problem. Hmm. <laughs> Jerk. Okay, since we're in the right area for it, let's go into the Bard's College. Should be interesting. You're new here, right? Yes. Welcome to the Bard's College. It's like a, a musical museum. Nice. Welcome to the Bard's College. I'm the headmaster here. How may I help you? Always a pleasure to meet a prospective Bard. You should be aware that many apply, but we accept very few study the heroes of the past. When possible, we ask applicants to perform tasks the college needs completed. In this case, I do have a task befitting an aspiring bard. Elisif has forbidden the burning of King Olaf, a festival put on by the Bard's College. We need to change her mind. To convince her, I want to read King Olaf's verse part of the poetic Edda, the living history of Skyrim. Unfortunately, the verse was lost long ago. 
Yes. According to Giraud, our history's keeper, the portion of the Edda dealing with King Olaf might still exist in Dead Man's Respite. I need you to retrieve the poem. Not much, to be honest. Their return was a shock to us all. Gerard Germain has some tomes about them in the library, if you're interested. Uh, not much. But as a bard, I find the whole affair depressing. There are no heroes in this war, no winners to be had, and no real conclusion. If you want something a bard can dig into, look to the dragons. A thousand years from now, Skyrim will have changed rulers dozens of times. But the return of the dragons, that story is once in an era. I think Giraud here would give you the best explanation of both it and the history of King Olaf's verse. You should speak to him about it. As you may be aware, Elisif's husband, High King Torig, was recently killed. Elisif mourns her husband deeply, and she feels that a festival that burns a king in effigy is... distasteful. I tried to convince her the festival is many centuries old and celebrates solitude, but I need proof. I believe King Olaf's verse will provide that proof. I wish you luck in finding the verse. Thank you. Now. Let's see. Okay, we'll get to that. Most folk in Skyrim consider the dragons terrifying. I find them wondrous. No, that honor is Sabeel Stentor's. A smart man steers clear of Stentor. And keeps himself out of the dungeon when she's having a bad day. Let's just say that the headsman's axe may not be the worst way for a solitude jail prisoner to die. Look at that. I've told you to watch your tongue, and mine is waggling said enough. I make sure Erica keeps breathing. Oh, I think you'll find that magic is rare in Skyrim. Winterhold, though, the college there has it in a Been there. The, the guys are weirder. You are free to leave. Oh, well, thank you very much for that honor. Into the Blue Palace. Really? 
Yes. Oh, 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 what kind of message? A song! A summons! Wait, uh, I know! A death threat written on the back of an Argonian concubine! Ah, those are my favorites. Well, spit it out, Margil! I haven't got an eternity. Actually, I do. Little joke. But seriously, what's the message? Thanks. Where are you now? By whom? Wait! Don't tell me. I want to guess. Was it Molag? No, no. Little Tim, the toy maker's son, huh? Huh? The ghost of King Lysandus? Ah, oh, or was it one? Yes! Stanley, the talking grapefruit from Passwall! Ha <laughs> ha! I'm wrong on all accounts, aren't I? Ha! <laughs> no matter! Honestly, I don't want to know. Why ruin the surprise? But more to the point, do you, tiny, puny, expendable little mortal, actually think you can convince me to leave? Because that's crazy! You do realize who you're dealing with here. A crazy guy. Johnny, good guess. But only half right. I'm a mad god. The mad god, actually. It's a family title. Gets passed down from me to myself every few thousand years. Now you, you can call me. Anne Marie! But only if you're partial to being played alive and having an angry immortal skip rope with your entrails! If not, then call me Sheagorath, Daedric Prince of Madness. Charmed. Now that's the real question, isn't it? Because honestly, how much time off could a demented Daedra really need? So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave. That's right. I'm done. Holiday complete. Time to return to the humdrum day to day. On one condition. You have to find the way out first. Well, good luck with that. Is it? Care to take a look around? This is not, I dare say, the Solitude Botanical Gardens. Idea where you are, where you truly are. Welcome to the deceptively ardent mind of the Emperor Pelagius the Third. That's right, you're in the head of a dead, homicidally insane monarch. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. Can I still rely on my swords and spells and sneaking and all that nonsense? Sure, sure. Or you could use... The Wabachak! Huh? Huh? Didn't see that coming, did you? Ah. Uh, right. Do you mind? I'm busy doing this thing. Oh, that is cool. delicate state of mind. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Let's get the... Crap out of here. Ah! Now this is a sad path. Pelagius hated and feared many things. Assassins, wild dogs, the undead, Pumpernickel. But the deepest, keenest hatred was for himself. Right. The attacks he makes on himself can be seen here fully. They're always carried out on the weakest part of his fragile cell. The self-loathing enhances Pelagius' anger. Ah, but his confidence will shrink with every hit. You must bring the two into balance. Dead and buried. Um... Right. Confusing.
You seem to be having a small problem. Or perhaps it's a big problem. Maybe if you shrunk the whole thing down a little first. Hmm. Wonder what he means by that. You've headed down the path of dreams. Unfortunately for you, Pelagius suffered night terrors from a young age. All you need to do is find something to wake our poor Pelagius up. You'll find his terrors easy to repel, but persistent. Okay, so where is Terrace? Oh, that's him. Boy, this place is trippy. Right. 